Hello everyone, welcome back to Speaking Spurs and me Kieran talking all things Tottenham and for only the second time since I've started this channel I'm in the car because it's a busy day jumping straight from work onto the next so I've got a spare 15 minutes or so before I move on to bring you some transfer stories and uh, updates from the last few days. So if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to support the video with a like and please, please, please leave your comments below so we can continue the discussion amongst ourselves. So let's talk about the transfer stories that have been coming out over the last few days. And we are going to jump in with Tanganga. So Tanganga's performances of late haven't been great in a Spurs shirt. He's lacking confidence. He's not got enough game time regularly. Um to ensure his development. He's got a nervousness to him, but he has been linked with a few clubs um, across Europe and I don't really want to see him go out the door just yet on a permanent. However, apparently we are willing to offer £15 million and Tanganga for Kulisevsky. So he's somebody that's been linked regularly with Spurs. Um, is it a good deal? £15 million and Tanganga. So... Young defender who's not performing at a particularly good level for a young midf midfielder. Also, well, he's 21 years old. He's an international bit part player at Juventus. But, you know, could it be could it be a good deal? Let me know below what you think about that one. But, you know, Tanganga's form has been up and down. Um, he's not suited to being a right back completely. He hasn't got enough pace for that. He's not good enough to sit in the centre of a back three. He is best placed on the right of a back three. However, Sanchez has occupied that role really well so far this season in the absence of Romero. And then when Romero comes back, it'll be a battle between him and Sanchez for that role because Dyer's nailed down the middle spot and uh, Davies has pretty much claimed that left spot for himself. So that leaves pretty much nowhere for Tanganga to sit. So the possibility of him going out and us bringing in a player that could potentially help us out in an area where we need a bit of creativity, it could could potentially be a good deal. Now, Kulisevsky, he's a talented player. There's many teams after him. Um, but I do worry 15 million and Tanganga. So if Tanganga's worth, I don't know, say 20 million, that's 35 million for Kulisevsky. We're obviously going to be losing a homegrown talent in Tanganga. And homegrown is something that's very important to have in the Premier League for your quota. And you also need that for European competition. It's been getting tighter over the years. So it could hinder us unless we're going to bring in a English talent from somewhere else or indeed promote somebody from the youth academy into the first team. Moving on next, uh, Steven Bergvine. He's been heavily linked with moves away from the club from the end of last season all the way to now. Conte has pretty much said he's part of his plans and that uh, Bergvine knows exactly where he stands within Conte's vision. Um, Ajax have come in asking of availability. We said not available to start with. They've come in with a 15 million bid, which we've turned down. And it looks like they're set to test us again because they want him in before the weekend uh, where they play on Sunday. They are desperate to get him in. It's a bit of a weird one. Like He's... Um, He's one of them players that's got an abundance of pace, strength. He's got good shot power. Uh, for reasons, injury, confidence, things just aren't working out well for him at Tottenham. Is this maybe the time just to cash in? Do we sometimes hang on to players a little bit too long out of, um, out of this hope that they develop into something better? I don't know. Um, but yeah, Bergvine, heavily linked with moves. He was also linked with Newcastle as well. They were looking at the possibility of bringing him in. Right, on to the next one. Contact with Jesse Lingard's team. So the Manchester United player, now 29 years old, hasn't really hit the ground running since he returned from his loan move at West Ham where he was sensational. Um, he had a very good spell there with nine goals and four assists. His expected goals and expected assists were much better than they've been in any season so far. I mean, was it a fluke? Was it that Moyes got the best out of him? Was it a system that suited him better? I don't know. Um, it looks like it's going to be a difficult one to get over the line in January. It's something we're looking at for the summer. And again, I'm. it's annoying because I don't want to hear about players that we're going to bring in in the summer. I want to know who's coming in now. And I'm sure many of you at home are in the same position where you want to know who's coming in now because the summer doesn't benefit us for this season to push and finish in the top four. And if we don't finish in the top four, many of these players we're linked with might not want to come anyway. Um, but what do you think about Lingard? Is he is he worth a punt on a free? 
on a free, yeah, I think he could be worth a punt. I think he's a player that's that's worth bringing in based on what he did at West Ham. Question is, uh, how is he going to fit in under Conte? Is he willing to work hard enough? What we saw at West Ham was certainly good things. And if he can continue that kind of form, excellent. But if we're going to get the same guy that's currently struggling at Manchester United, absolutely not for me. Um, what else? So Conte has had his transfer meeting with Paratici and Levy. Uh, I don't know if Mitchell was involved or not. Um, but he was saying he does not have expectations. That's a little bit of a, a worrying thing to say. But however, um, he said uh, about people going out, he counts on Bergvine. Um, and then with regards to transfers, he kind of brushed it aside and actually said the best way, because he is a coach, not the manager, he's a coach. His best possible way is to get the most out of the players that he currently has. So essentially, I think what's happened, he's had a meet and said, look, we need to strengthen in these areas. He's probably suggested a few players that he likes and wouldn't mind seeing in a Spurs shirt, but it's up up to Daniel Levy um, and Paratici to go out there and fulfil his needs with the type of player he wants. Then once they come in, it's up to Conte to mould that player, help them fit into our system and bring out the best in the individual players. I think that's kind of what he is getting at. Right, moving on. In terms of a player of Tangi and Dombele, who's been the biggest frustration of any Spurs fan over the last week or so. So they held talks with many clubs before the Morgan game. Um, he was our record transfer, meant to be the successor to Dembele, um, and he spurs his headache now. He's 25 years old. Off the on, sorry, on the ball, he's arguably our most talented player. But off the ball, he's the worst. He has no tactical awareness by the looks of it. No motivation in most of the games, uh, and the same problem that he's had from youth football youth football this has followed him around everywhere he's been so far so it's not great uh, and as we saw when he was subbed off trudged across the pitch whilst others like Deli Ali went off behind the goal and walked a long way round Hill ran across the pitch and actually overtook him as he was crossing the line um look moving him on could be difficult just because um he's still got three and a half years left on his contract he's one of the top earners at the club um a loan deal may be the best solution, and it looks like that's what's going to happen. We're offering him around to many places, um, but apparently he's happy at the club and wanted to stay and fight for his place. I don't know if that's changed in the last week, but that is the word that we're hearing. Um, and then the other players that could possibly leave is obviously um, Deli Ali and Doherty. And the, Hele the Kessie talks haven't gone away whatsoever. They're still saying that we are, you know, the front runners for him. Um, other clubs in for him, Paris Saint-Germain with our former manager Pochettino. I'm sure there'll be many other teams up for, up, up, up for, uh, looking at him in this transfer window and if not pre-contract agreement for the summer. Uh, the other one that I found hilarious and I never bothered reporting on it. Um, it was, was it last week or the week before? The links with Antoine Griezmann. Just can't see that one happening at all. It'd be high wages, um, more than we want to pay for him didn't work out for him at Barcelona I just I don't think he's the right sort of player for our club unless he can really hit top form um, it will depend very much on what Conte thinks he can get out of a player like that but I just don't think there'd be any any interest on his part to come to Spurs especially seeing as a uh, top European football is not a certainty for us and the direction of the club in terms of uh, quality on the field we just don't really know where we're at. We don't know if Conte will hang around. He's obviously on a short contract, although he said that's um, not really any concern. And we might as well finish with a little bit of good news. Hugo Lloris. So Conte has spoken about him many times, saying that he expects um, the contract issue to be sorted out at some point, whether that meant to sign or to leave, who knows. He's obviously hinted um, of him staying. And recently he's come out and basically said he feels like it's heading in a good direction and it should be sorted soon and I would expect Larice would give us at least one more year many of us want him to give us you know two to three more years I, th I think he's still got a good amount of time at the top but the good news on that front is it looks more and more likely day by day that Hugo Lloris is going to stay with Spurs past this season so that's it for today thanks for sticking around and watching don't forget to subscribe like and comment and until next time Come on, you Spurs.